when a giant rhinoceros beetle encounters a swarm of voracious meat ants. It's a conflict that will end in blood. Rhinoceros beetles are like tanks on the bug battlefield. They're among the biggest of all the beetles, titans of the bug world. Rhinoceros beetles aren't misnamed. They're big, they're kind of clumsy, but they have a thick, heavy, sclerotized exoskeleton that is incredibly hard to pierce. It covers most of their body, and the rhinoceros beetles are awesomely strong. On a power to weight ratio, these battle bugs are the strongest animals on the face of the earth. It's estimated that a rhinoceros beetle is able to push or carry as much as 850 times its body weight. We're talking that a human could lift as much as 65 tons. This is a crazy heavy amount that this rhinoceros beetle is able to carry. For all its brute force, this monster mostly eats rotting fruit, which provides all the fuel it needs to wrestle a rival. The males and the males alone have these big horn-like structures that act like levers. Each male has two forked horns, one on the head, the other on the top of the prothorax. As a weapon, they work like a pair of sharp tongs to catch and dispatch an opponent. But for all his brutish ways, the rhinoceros beetle has one surprising trick up his sleeve. He can fly. The rhinoceros beetle almost transforms itself when it gets ready to fly. It opens its four wings in a click and then lumbers into flight. These are not great flyers. It takes to the air with all the grace you'd expect from a tank with wings. Still, it's a talent that could save its life. And he may need an escape strategy if he strays into meat ant territory. One single ant isn't much of a threat. But where you find one, you'll find many. Individual nests can contain tens of thousands of ants, but they're often linked together into super colonies that can contain hundreds of thousands or more. Meat ants don't sting, but they bite with a vengeance with mandibles honed like steel shears to rip through raw flesh. For the victim, it's death by a thousand cuts. The ants just swarm over whatever they're attacking, and all those tiny little jaws keep snipping and snipping and snipping until it's history. They can make an animal much larger than them run for the hills. Whenever a meat ant is moving, it's hunting. And there are many mouths to feed. Meat ant colonies have multiple queens, all pumping out larvae that need to be fed. This is why the colonies are always on the hunt. They just have so many larvae back at home screaming for energy-rich food. In the eternal tussle for insect supremacy, some bugs are Goliaths, and some more like Davids, with a bad attitude. Meat ants are really kind of ill-behaved ants. These are aggressive ants that are perfectly willing to attack. They're scary ants. Next, an armor-plated warrior goes to battle. Then, a spider supermodel 
on a killing spree. And later, no holds barred for two killer huntsmen. Meat ants are active in daylight, while rhinoceros beetles get busy at night. But there's sometimes a crossover hour. It's early morning, and a tank-like vegetarian blunders into meat ant territory. The alarm goes out through the colony. The ants have sent out the chemical signal to call in further reinforcements. So if the beetle's in trouble now, soon he's going to be in even bigger trouble. As the ants start nipping at his heels, he loses his balance <coughs> and falls onto the nest. The beetle's best defense is its impenetrable armor. Really, the only places where these ants are going to be able to get in and bite at the rhinoceros beetle effectively is at its joints. And that's where the ants attack in force. The beetle tries to escape. He needs to get clear to fly away. But carrying vicious ants as excess baggage, he can't get to the runway. The best thing it could do is fly away, but it gets ready to fly really slowly. The ants dig deeper now. They crawl inside the skin of their prey, spraying formic acid savagely and relentlessly. Dozens of mandibles are biting the beetle to death. At this point, the beetle's armor is useless. The ants are going to crawl into every crevice they can and bite him into oblivion. In this battle, size becomes a disadvantage. A lumbering armored tank is no match for armor-piercing infantry. In the cruel bug kingdom, some killers camouflage themselves. Others survive on pure speed or brute force. When a moss mantis clashes with a tiger beetle, two worlds collide. On the moss-covered branches of a South American rainforest, a specter haunts, ruthless, cunning, hidden. The moss mantis is a master concealer. Tiny tufts resembling lichen cover the mantid's body, breaking up its silhouette. It doesn't just look like moss. It behaves like moss. The moss mantis is so adept at impersonating moss that it'll hang down under the branches as well, even swaying side to side like a little bit of moss in the breeze. Talk about an evil genius. You may not see it, but it sees you. With super-sensitive eyes, mottled and horned, 
to blend into the background. These two large compound eyes give the mantis excellent depth perception, a very wide field of view, and they can even detect motion up to 60 feet away. The instant it senses movement, the mantis deploys ingenious range-finding equipment on its neck. Mantis have a series of very fine hairs on the back of their neck that are in constant contact with the head. So as the head turns to look at a prey, the hairs also move, and this tells them exactly what direction to launch their reptorial strike. It's so accurate that 85% of the strikes are successful. In strike mode, the moss mantis lulls victims into complacency. It looks as harmless as any other part of the mossy forest. But when it goes on the attack, the moss mantis becomes a slick killing machine. Its huge limbs launch it through the air in search of prey. A wolf spider prowling for food doesn't realize it's on the menu. When a mantis snatches its prey, the entire strike only takes 30 to 50 milliseconds. That's three or four times faster than a human muscle reflex, or about 10% how long it takes for me to blink my eyes. Raptorial legs open like switchblades, revealing large spikes that hook the prey and drag it to the waiting mouth. Mandibles, sharp enough to slice through the toughest bug armor like a can opener, make short work of soft spider flesh. When the meal is over, the master of disguise lies in wait for another victim. But not every bug worries about camouflage or clever tactics. Flashy and fast, tiger beetles take other bugs head on. Tiger beetles are fast animals. They run after prey, they grab it, they tear it to pieces, they eat it fast, and go off running again. With iridescent shells, metallic sheen, and blinding speed, ground-hugging tiger beetles are like Formula One cars on legs. They hold the land speed record for bugs, beetling along at an incredible 50 body lengths per second. If this was a human running equivalently fast, this would be 480 miles an hour. This is amazingly fast. But when the tiger steps on the gas, something strange happens. Its eyes can't keep up. They move so fast, their brain can't process how fast they're moving. So they literally go blind while they're running. The tiger beetle's speed is matched only by its savagery. Enormous serrated mandibles tear the victim to pieces. Tiger beetles have these massive jaws. They're equivalent to 10% of the body length of the animal. They're these huge sickle-like shears. It's equivalent to humans having eight-inch teeth. Those jaws cut and mash, squeezing fluids from prey, leaving behind an unrecognizable pulp. But the tiger beetle's hectic pace requires a constant supply of fuel. Tiger beetles need to eat a lot all of the time in order to maintain their energy to run so fast. That puts it on a collision course with the moss mantis. What happens when the fast and the furious 
runs into the ghost who stalks. If the mantis doesn't get in a good first shot, the tiger beetle could really hurt it. Next, a speed demon takes on a master of disguise. Then, horned monsters go head to head. And later, terror tactics in the jungle. In the mossy reaches of a South American rainforest, a voracious tiger beetle is on its never-ending quest for food. Nearby, a moss mantis watches, poised to strike. The moss mantis attacks with lethal limbs and savage mouth parts. The tiger beetle combines speed with crushing, slicing mandibles. Who will inflict the mortal blow? The mantid must choose its moment with military precision, because the tiger beetle can sever entire limbs with a single bite. Its jaws are big enough that it could tear the legs off this mantid. It could break the mantid in half. The beetle waits for telltale movement. Tiger beetles are visual predators. They're moving and they're looking for movement in the environment, and that's what they're tracking. The problem is when they come up against this mantis, the mantis isn't moving around. The mantis doesn't stay motionless for long. In less time than it takes to blink, switchblade arms snatch the tiger beetle. The mantid spins its foe around, keeping the beetle's deadly mandibles at a safe distance. All the while, the mantid's jaws wreak havoc. The mantis's mandibles might be small, but they can cut through just about any bug's armor. Defenseless, the tiger beetle has nowhere to run. Speed isn't everything. Sometimes the animals that just stay very still and then attack very rapidly are really the winners. In the bug world, it isn't always survival of the fastest. The bug realm is a slaughterhouse. With butchers on every blade of grass, no one is safe. When a flame-bellied orb weaver and a longicorn beetle bring out the blades, there will be blood. Like a nightmare from a horror show, the longicorn beetle is like a flying chainsaw. In Costa Rica, there's a widespread myth that they can saw a branch off a tree just by hooking on with their jaws and flying in a circle. The longicorn beetle is built like a ground-to-air wood chopping machine. Body and wings are protected by heavy armor. Two grappling hooks on each foot help it cling to trees. Even the antennae are thick and tough. The antennas serve as sensors for smelling, for contact chemoreception. Another notable feature of the antenna are their length. This is not something that a predator would want to have to deal with while also having to fend off those powerful jaws. Those jaws are like razor-sharp axes, able to shear straight through timber. 
They're very powerful and could crush another animal in a heartbeat or tear it clean in half. The longicorn beetle prefers its diet of wood, but it won't shrink from fighting the most vicious predators. One of them is a neighboring flame-bellied orb weaver. It sits and waits. A patient executioner, wearing its orange markings like team colors. This is just a tough, aggressive orb weaver that's able to capture big things that come into the web, get in there, bite it, and wrap it. This mobile attacker has multiple eyes. But it's those extra sensitive feet that turn the web into long range radar. By building this orb web, it's able to extend its sensory system and feel vibrations from around it from quite a large distance. When a cricket wanders in, there's no mistaking the dinner bell. It grabs the prey and starts swathing it with silk. And then as soon as it's safe, it'll get in there and bite. The flame-bellied orb weaver injects its powerful neurotoxins. The cricket is soon paralyzed and devoured. But will the victory come quite so easily when the armored woodcutter tangles with a high-wire hitman? Next, a deadly trap for vicious players. In the forest, a wood-eating longicorn beetle flits from tree to tree, gorging on bark. Nearby, a flame-bellied orb weaver is primed to strike. The flame-bellied orb weaver has super sticky silk and potent venom. The longicorn beetle has size and strength with heavy body armor and shredding mandibles. Who will survive? The beetle has fed well tonight, perhaps too well. Heading homeward, its concentration lapses. And it's snared in the orb weaver's trap. In a frenzy, the flame belly throws silk bandages around its victim. This is now a battle between silk and scissors. The beetle's only chance of survival is to use those mandibles to cut through the web before the spider has a chance to deliver a bite. The spider must work fast. One wrong move, and the longicorn's timber-tearing jaws could sever a leg, even chop its opponent in half. This beetle has these big jaws, and it's struggling hard. The spider knows that it's potentially a really dangerous opponent. The flame belly's spinnerets work overtime. She circles the larger beetle, wrapping constantly. In a last ditch effort, the beetle pierces the silken death shroud with its mandibles. But the spider keeps a safe distance. These guys might munch through bark like it's butter, but when you're wrapped up in one of the world's strongest spider silks and you're under attack, getting that chainsaw fired up and into action is no easy proposition. For the longicorn beetle, time is fast running out. And predator and prey are locked together in a spiral dance of death. 
the spider probes for a chink in the tough armor. Delivers a toxic bite and retreats to the middle of the web, confident that its venom will do the rest. All that remains is for the flame-bellied orb weaver to haul its dinner up and feast. The airborne woodcutter has taken its last flight. When a domino beetle goes head-to-head -head with a crimson-legged assassin bug, it's caustic chemicals versus a surgical spear. So often in a tropical paradise, where there's beauty, there's danger. Predators stalk these petals. with a glossy black carapace and white spots. It's not hard to guess how the domino beetle got its name. This mean fighter comes from a family of belligerent beetles. They are good predators and they'll do what it takes to get food, whether it's stealing food, pillaging food, or killing food. The domino is the hyena of the bug world an unfussy carnivorous scavenger, happy to chow down on any creature, living or dead. Its prey are mashed by mandibles that are more powerful than they seem. Although his mandibles are relatively small, they're general purpose, and they pack a much stronger punch than they look like they do. Should an attacker persist, then it's all-out chemical warfare. When threatened, the domino sprays a noxious secretion. It's a combination of formic acid, which burns, and hydrocarbons that are really stinky, so he just smells really bad. The domino beetle is also fast and fidgety, unable to stand still. But that sometimes lands him in trouble when he finds himself near a potential foe. The crimson-legged assassin bug is a mortal enemy. With its chunky red legs, ungainly body, and elephantine proboscis, this bug is, let's face it, no oil painting. There are some researchers at Arizona State University who hold an annual event called the Ugly Bug Contest. One year, it was won by an assassin bug. This mean guy likes to win ugly, too. Massive forelegs like baseball bats, club prey into submission. And that huge proboscis injects toxic saliva that kills almost instantly. And at all times, those bulbous compound eyes are on the lookout. Though the domino beetle doesn't know it, it's wandered into danger. What happens when the hyena clashes with the hitman? Even though the assassin bug is the only dedicated predator in this chance meeting, the domino beetle still knows how to fight, and his mandibles are quite hardcore. So, anything could happen. Next, a fight to the death in the rainforest flowers. Then, 
An all-terrain tank takes on a flesh-eating leopard. Amid the rainforest flowers, a battle is about to begin. A carnivorous domino beetle, scavenging for food, wanders into danger. A ravenous crimson-legged assassin bug on the hunt has an appetite for fresh beetle. The domino beetle has crushing mandibles tough armor, and a noxious chemical spray. The assassin bug has club-like legs and a harpoon proboscis that injects lethal toxins. Which combatant will survive? The hyperactive domino beetle has stumbled into trouble. Its movement has attracted the assassin. At the last moment, the domino sidesteps a deadly blow. This domino beetle ought to avoid that assassin bug, but it's such a hyperactive animal, I don't think it's going to back off. The domino returns. This time, the assassin makes the first move and gets a nasty surprise. A burning, stinking chemical cloud sends it reeling. That's like being sprayed right in the face with a can of mace. It's gotta hurt. But it doesn't mean that he's given up on turning that beetle into lunch. The beetle's bought itself a little time. But the effects of the noxious spray soon wear off. The assassin bug launches a ferocious attack. This time, there'll be no chemical counter-strike. In the blink of an eye, the domino falls. Once this beetle has been injected with the highly toxic saliva of the assassin bug, it doesn't have a chance to respond. It's all over for this beetle. It hasn't been the easiest hit, but at last the victor can relax. The assassin's work is done, and the hyperactive domino has made its last move.